you don't know, you don't know my favorite thing about my mama TJ. This yeah. I'm not on her level. Mm-hmm. So as far as like how to have unwavering faith, you know that was that was one you of your pitches with her. for. <laughs> that was one of your pitches for this, and I was like, I ain't arrived there. <laughs> but as what's the word I'm looking for? As set as she is in her ways, mm-hmm. there is one thing about this woman mm-hmm. that if I bring her something in the scriptures, mm-hmm. she's been saved. She's just ten years old. She'll tell you, mm-hmm. okay. If I bring her something in the scriptures, the Lord has revealed or downloaded or whatnot. I'm like, ma, this was this was a little wrong. Mm-hmm. She go, it takes her a couple. Don't don't get me wrong. It takes her about three to four minutes, and mm-hmm. she's like. I ain't never seen it that way, but if it's in there, she's like, oh. And then her belief system, she Shifts. changes based off of revelation. She's not stuck. In all of these years, she is not mm-hmm. stuck to something that she originally thought mm. over mm-hmm. what's actually in there. Mm. And so that, to me, is faith. Yeah. The day that I went and told her years ago, like this would have been 2014, mm-hmm. I told her that I was getting married mm-hmm. to a woman mm-hmm. and being a believer, she was like, I love you. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love you. Mm-hmm. But the Bible says yeah. that that's wrong. Yeah. And so I can't be there. Mm-hmm. You know what? I felt hated mm-hmm. by my mother mm-hmm. that day. And then it was a few months ago, I was sitting in church. Uh, and I don't know. It's just like the Lord, the, the pastor had something, memory. something, and he, he, the Lord brought that back, and he was like, he said that. Mm-hmm. He it's said the of faith of your mother, mm-hmm. because she literally put her love of God above you, above her. Do you mm-hmm. know she did what Jesus said do? Mm. Do you know how hard that is? It's hard. Because I was, I didn't, I wasn't like, okay, mom. I was like, mm-hmm. I felt. I felt uh, discarded. Yeah. And so I'm going to encourage anybody because I don't know who's listening to this. I have no idea. But that idea of saying, I feel like somebody recently was like throwing, people were throwing shade Mm -hmm. because he was telling them to go Mm -hmm. to a family member's Mm -hmm. same sex wedding. Oh, yeah, go to a wedding. Yeah. Yeah. It Um, was a pastor. I don't know who the pastor was because he was saying that he would go to his Son, his own son's wedding or something You know like that. what? But as being someone who was in that lifestyle for nearly 14 years, who mm-hmm. was married to a woman for seven, I promise you the Lord isn't, the Lord loved, the Lord that whole time, he loved, God loved me more than my mama ever could. Yeah. God loves them more than you ever okay. will. Yeah. Right? And there is, although it felt like hate that day, it was, but once God freed me, I could see it for what it. it truly is. Yeah. And so I don't want people to sacrifice their faith mm-hmm. to comfort yeah. someone because I promise you, what, to where I'm at today, TJ, yeah. the people who said I loved you mm-hmm. while they were affirming and confirming me in that lifestyle, you know where they are? They're not in my life. Yeah. Because that love, yeah, it wasn't real. It's not real. Mm-hmm. The love that God has is the only love that we can stand on. Yeah, don't go. I'm sorry. That's my opinion. Yeah, y'all can hate me if you want to. No, I don't I mean, have a it's ministry real. to ruin, but yeah. don't go. Stand yeah. up because that's the thing. <laughs> I don't have a ministry to ruin. <laughs> but you, but it's true because like you don't know how how freeing that is to to people that will hear that because there there's people in in every type of lifestyle. Uh, but primarily, if you're in the homosexual lifestyle and you feel like, oh, my parents rejected me because they wouldn't come to my wedding, they wouldn't do this, they wouldn't do that. And if they were standing on the word of God, you don't realize that that is really love. Dude. It's hard love. And it's such and you a good feel, witness. It's a, such a good witness. Like when you figure it out, when you really understand Jesus for who you are and you really figure it out, like you'll understand. It's like, oh, my gosh. It was like, God loved me enough to tell my parents no. Like, mm-hmm. and, and, and. The things that we think that God is like, God is love. He would, He would still allow us, our children. No, like Mm -mm. He said, "What I come to put mother against daughter, father against son." That's one way, because we have, like you said, we have to sacrifice for this. Mm -hmm. Like we can't put this above. I'm sorry, we we can put this. We can't put like our like our love for our spouses, love for our children, love for all, all these other things above this. No. It's like, and, be- and and right below this is marriage because God values marriage just as much as he values this. And it's like, 
we have to understand that the, that dynamic because the way that marriage is, and I, we would get on all these different tangents. We're not even like on struggling faith anymore. It's but unscripted. The way, I'm sorry. the way that marriage is designed mm-hmm. is designed as a direct reflection of God's relationship with us. Mm-hmm. He's married to us. No matter what we do, yeah. no matter what hell we go through, no matter what we do to ourselves, he's what? He's long suffering. He'll sit there and he's like, I'm wait for you to get it. Wait for you to get it together. And he'll tell us, he'll tell us straight up how we how he really feel about us. Like, no, you're doing this wrong. Mm-hmm. It's like you you you're you're giving yourself to this more than you're giving yourself to me. It was like, I need you to go in your prayer. I need you to pray more. I need you to do this. And we ignore it. Mm-hmm. But when we actually do listen to God and we turn back to him, what is he what he's doing? He's always there mm-hmm. ready to receive us. Yeah. You just got to get there. You just got to get there. I mean, and it's a process. And I tell everybody that all the time. It's like faith is a process. It's not something that happens overnight. Mm-hmm. It's like you're going to go through things, situations in life that what test and build your faith. Come on. That's what it's all about. Like, uh, I will probably, I won't say I get rejected, but I'll probably, <laughs> I won't say catch a lot of flat, but I, I, will, I probably will. I don't know because of my stance on the Bible, because of my stance on the word of God and how it contradicts what a lot of people think. Like, I don't even care. As long as I'm standing on the word of God, like, that's all that matters to me. It ain't my name on it the line. It ain't my name on the line, right. The only thing I want to hear when I die is, well, well done, thy good and faithful servant. That's it. That's all. Like, I could care less about, oh, he was a pastor here. He was an elder there. He was this. He was that. No, I don't do this for titles. Mm-mm. I don't do this for any type of recognition, fanfare, whatever. Like, putting a title on it is just, you know, nice, and it just gives me access to do whatever. But I don't need a title to, to do this. I don't need a title to read my Bible. Mm-hmm. I don't need a title to study it. Nope. I don't need a title to preach it. If God told me to do it, do it. That's it. If God called me to it, do it. Mm-hmm. And I think that a lot of people, they, they'll struggle in their faith. Going all the way back to our top, our initial topic. A lot of people, they'll struggle in their faith because they don't know this. Yeah. Well, see, that's too, your faith isn't, your faith's not your calling either. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because if you take a lot of people, you take their calling away, their faith would go with it. Yeah. Your faith isn't anything independent of God. Yeah. It literally can't be. If it is, that's probably why you're struggling. Yeah. God don't move. Yeah. He is unmoved. He is literally. unmovable. Yeah. He changes not. He changes not. And he is not man's. He should not lie. Yeah. Like, he ain't going to change his mind. He ain't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We probably could have yeah. kept a lot of them denominations from getting started right there if we. The did thing is, that, first. that part, <laughs> like we actually understood the idea of the kingdom. It's like, and this, and this probably, and I will say this: this is probably one of the things I struggle with. I only say in my faith, I only struggle in my faith with this, but I struggle hard with denominations. Like I struggle so hard. Like I mean, and I, and I mean, I'm not saying this to be like, oh, TJ, you should no. I've been saying, and I'm really airing out some stuff. I've I've been saying for the past two or three years that I'm going to move my membership over to this new denomination. Mm-hmm. But I've been struggling to do that. Honestly, because of the fact that, you know, some of it is rooted in fear. But I found out that there is a fear component to faith. And that fear is a reverence to God. Um, but a lot of it is the fact that I have, I have an issue. <laughs> I have an issue with denominations. And it's not that it's like, it's not, I, I really do. Like, I, I really have an issue because you it's know like, why? I know why. Because it's not in there. It's not in there. Right. And it's like, what are we doing? Why are we arguing and dividing over stupid, whimsical matters? 3, like, 3,000 denominations may miss heaven by a technicality. God said he's coming back for what? A church without what? A spot or a wrinkle? Bro, clean hands, pure heart. And it's funny because, like, <laughs> It's funny because as growing up as a kid, now I love my pastor growing up. God rest his soul. <laughs> but he he would always he he misinterpreted that that scripture. He thought he was like, yeah, God is coming back for my church. He was like, <laughs> no, and that's not what it was all about. He was like, I'm praying that we are the church. That he maybe he misinterpreted. Maybe he meant something to provide because what I'm about to say. But the church that he's looking for is the true church of Jesus Christ that will follow him, lay down everything, and follow him. Lay down their literal lives. Like, you know what? <clears throat> when you look at across the seas, the faith of foreigners compared to the faith of Americans, 
we just believe God for cars and houses and stuff. They're believing that their neighbor don't kill them like, uh, <laughs> for being a Christian. They they literally have to, and I was I was watching this a long time ago, um, and it stuck with me. Like, I, don't, I forgot the country, but they have to go out in the middle of the night, past past midnight, in the middle of the night, way out in the woods, just to have a worship service, just so that they can worship God and not have to fear being persecuted. You want to talk about struggling faith? Like, <laughs> but do you also want to talk about solidifying faith? Because like you know that's I, unwavering faith. Do you know where I found Jesus? In the wilderness season. In the midst of affliction. Mm-hmm. There's a whole book written about how he encounters people in the face of affliction. That is why people's belief overseas has such a different feel to it than ours. Mm-hmm. We don't want affliction. We want a savior, so we're comfortable. Yeah. We don't realize that the Savior will literally coordinate mm-hmm. the affliction so that we can then be saved. They mm. ain't ready for that. They ain't ready for that. No. No, oh, because it's the thing. Oh, it's the things that you think that you want. It's the things that you think that you need are the things that prevent you from actually communing with Him. Mm. <laughs> Y'all too comfortable too to comfortable. need a Savior. Yeah. We're too comfortable in our churches. We're too comfortable in our denominations. We're too comfortable in our suits. We're too comfortable in our in our hats for the for the for the mothers. We too comfortable in all these different things yeah, because what? Choice. I'm coming for everything. I mean, but it's the truth because yeah. we're, we're so comfortable in these things, and we don't realize like you're gonna miss heaven because you value those things more than you value the word of God. And of course, we attach scripture to everything. Yeah, out of but context. is it the right interpret? Right, out of context. Like that's what I was about to say the right interpretation. Like. God, yeah. So one of the things that I got flat for, I got heat for, was because I told, I I put this in. The, I was talking to one of my best friends, <clears throat> and I was sharing with him how I discovered that our pastor, this is not now, but it was way before, our pastor was taking scripture out of context, mm-hmm. and I broke it down. I showed him. He was like, "Wow, yeah." That got back to the word of of the pastor. One of the things that I, when I talked about the season of, of yeah. that, imagine, imagine the heat I got from that. How did they get back to him? Uh, <laughs> ain't going to go there. I might edit it out. <laughs> Don't be scared. But how, no, I'm not scared. No, it ain't that. No, trust me, it ain't that. I ain't scared to share my story. Like, God has really been dealing with me, with, like, really sharing my story about that. Um, because it's like, <clears throat> when that whole season happened, that's one thing I can say. I never struggled in my faith. I was more assured of God mm-hmm. in that season than anything else. The only thing I can say that really I struggled with was I, I wondered, am I really hearing God's voice? Mm-hmm. And the reason why is because oh God, yeah, it's going, it's taking me to Psalm 73. The only reason why I'm thinking that was because you see, <laughs> you see the wicked and how they're prospering. You see how all these people who are hurting me, how they are still, living their lives like nothing has ever happened to them. Still going on day to day, doing all these different things. And I'm just sitting here like, God, did I really hear your voice? Did I really, like, and I'm sitting here crying because of the pain and the hurt and the affliction and everything that has been brought on me. And I'm like, God, I know I heard you. I know you said to do this. I know you said to do that. But it's like, but why, why am I sitting here in pain? Mm -hmm. And they are here like this. And they still in church shouting. (laughs) That's for the church folk. But not only that, but like you're still doing your own little thing. You're still living your life as if nothing ever happened. And that was, I won't say it was a a struggling faith. It was more of, God, am I really hearing your voice? And the way God responds every time, he always responds either audibly or he'll he'll send a messenger to confirm that you are hearing exactly what he's saying. Like I've had so many different people who have never met Never met, mm-hmm. prophesy stuff to me and tell me things. That kept me going. Yeah, God spoke to me audibly and told me you're on the right path too. And like whenever I hear those things, and 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 whenever God sends prophetic voices my way and they'll you know encourage me and tell me these things, that keeps me in line. That's how I know. Okay, I know God. I know you're talking to me. Mm-hmm. I know. So now it's like I ain't, I ain't worried. Like I make a decision. I'm like yeah, God told me to do it. I ain't, I, I'm sorry, I can't do it. God yeah. told me to do it. 
Like, <laughs> and that's that. Mm-hmm. Now, I may piss people off, but, you know, hey, that's that. Like, take it up with God. He told me to do this. <laughs> so, yeah. but at the same time, it's like, you know, we have to be so assured of our faith and so assured of who our faith is in mm-hmm. that when we hear directly from him, we don't have to question those things. Right. Because that was the only thing I really questioned during that time. Like, my faith never really struggled. Mm-hmm. It was, I will not even say it was unwavering. But it was solidified through the fact that we had to go through those things. Yeah. Not only was like, and, and my wife can attest to this too, but not only was our faith like reassured, but our marriage was reassured. Mm-hmm. Like she had my back. Yeah. You're talking about laying down. She, she laid down the church that she grew up in. Mm-hmm. This is her home church. This is, she was a babe. She was born in it. Yeah. Like she didn't just join it. She was born in it. Like she had to give that up. Mm-hmm. Not just because of, you know, I told her to. No, she was right there with me watching all of this stuff happen to me. Right. She was right there and it was happening to her too. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I I, I, I know my faith didn't, didn't struggle, didn't waver, um, but it was more assured and our marriage, our faith, everything in God was solidified through through making that decision. Mm-hmm. And so, and that's why I thank God. Like I used to, I used to think all the time, it was like, man, it's like if I, if we had never moved, cause we, we got in an argument about moving to Charlotte. Cause I told her, it's like, yeah, I ain't moving. I ain't selling this house for nothing. It was, like, <laughs> it was like, I don't care if it's a contract. I'm never selling this house. And the first offer that came through was a six figure job with a contract. And I was like, well, <laughs> you gotta go. right. It's like, God, uh, do you really want me to do this? And God was like, yes, go. And so, and then, Confirmed through other prophetic voices, like, yes, go. I was like, all right, go. But the, the problem is we were trying to hold on to a lot of different things. We were trying to hold on to life here. And God was like, no, you got to you gotta cut that off. Mm-hmm. And that's how we went through all of those vi- um, various trials and tribulations and stuff. Right. Because we refused to cut off things and move forward with God. Which is proof of struggling faith. Which is proof. Yeah. 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 But that was that wasn't that now that yeah that is a part of my of struggling faith. Mm-hmm. But like after all of that, we struggled with the idea of finding a new church home because we were so tethered to our last church. Mm-hmm. And we was like, man, that mean who gonna preach to us? Who gonna pray for us? Who gonna do this? Who gonna do that? And it was so funny because um, we had a situation. We had like a cancer scare. Um, the doctors had thought my wife had a, a lump on her throat and I just remember like both of us I mean, we was just like oh my god what are we gonna do <laughs> but it's not mind you this is the time like we've never talked about this but this is the time like you know we're out on our own mm-hmm. reject it whatever we're out on our own we listen to, we own god listen to god my mother-in-law she has an amazing heart she was she was either up visiting us at the, yeah she was up visiting us at the time she was like y'all need to go and see bishop and let him pray for you <laughs> And I was like, and something just rose up in me. It was like, we don't have to do that. We don't have to go to the bishop to pray. I can pray for her. She can pray for herself. Like, we got the word. Like, <laughs> we prayed. We prayed there. And she I don't want to say she was healed, but we prayed and the diagnosis was reversed. It was like, it wasn't there. Yeah. So it was like, it, it, people don't realize how tethered religion they are to it. Because of the fact that they think, oh, I got to go to this person. They got to pray for me. They got to do no. You go to the throne to your by yourself. Like the veil was torn for us, for us, not the church. Right. Like, hey, yeah. come on, <laughs> dude. It's the truth. I it's mean, truth. I think people forget that. I want to say one thing about that though mm-hmm. is because you're saying when y'all were struggling, you were like looking and seeing them whoever hurt you, mm-hmm. and they seem to be doing fine. I'm mm-hmm. like, how? And I think that is a that is a, a normal occurrence. It's a normal thing. So when, but this this is because I've I've been ooh, you okay? Right. I'm over here in a season of affliction, and everybody <laughs> that have done afflicted me it's seem to be living, living their best life. life. You know, they ain't going back and forth for nobody. They're just living their I'm best just life. Like, and I'm wow. just like wow. And so this idea <laughs> though that we uh we put we say that God is. Mm. You know exactly where I was going. <laughs> that that he must be accompanied by goodness. Mm-hmm. And so this is something I struggle with because I'm like, Lord, my life has been ruined. <laughs> Everything that I had has turned tumbled down. Yeah. down. It's been obliterated, decimated. Like we're not talking like, oh, one thing got out mm-hmm. of whack. Like right. everything. Everything. 
And so how come it's like this for me? And it's just, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So then he was like, all right, he takes me to Matthew chapter four, mm -hmm. the third temptation. Mm. Satan takes mm -hmm. Jesus and he says, I'll give like you all of this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so until we divorce this idea that God's approval comes through mm -hmm. addition to your life, comes through monetary gain, the devil is mm -hmm. in charge of this world. Yep. And so these, these, <laughs> the ways that you may see an increase mm -hmm. in your life and we love to it to say we love to attribute increase mm -hmm. oh thank you god he is faithful right. you know that's the devil you just mm. you literally just traded your soul mm. because this idea that that god is only increase and no affliction that's why our faith is struggling too mm. is because we don't actually read this we just let our pastor ted talk once <laughs> a week tell us how tell good us what, we right, are right and then when and we'll shout it out and we're like, thank you jesus uh -huh. i feel much better like you said b12 shot right we're good like then see facing you next the, week seeing facing the same problem as soon as we leave the church that's it because we have these these uh weird ways of thinking about god we're so mm. limiting mm. like he's only good he's not just mm. Like, how do you mm. think we're supposed to be made into Jesus? If Jesus was perfect, are you mm. perfect, TJ? No, I ain't perfect. How in the world are we supposed to get made into mm -hmm. the likeness of Christ if mm -hmm. we're not pushed on or prodded mm -hmm. or formed mm -hmm. or shaped? Where mm -hmm. y'all think this comes from? Right. Y'all guys, man, my southern accent come it's out. coming out. I get so irritated You know irritated what? It's funny you this. say that because I read recently, and I've always overlooked this. I think we always, all of us always overlooked it. The scripture um, that you were, were, were referencing uh, where Jesus went into the wilderness to be tempted. The beginning part says what? That he was led to the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. Right. It's like, God, I know a lot of times we'll, we'll say, oh, that's the devil. <laughs> that's the devil putting this stumbling block in my way. That's the God will never tempt you. God is the coordinator of all but temptation. He, he is, he will test you. <laughs> he will test you. The living mess out of you. For a purpose. For a purpose. And the reason why Jesus was tested, even at last, the last temptation, mm -hmm. what did Satan offer him? Everything. The kingdoms and their the glory. And their glory. He, it's not even his to give. Okay. Yeah, it is, kind of. But only but, uh, but listen, God's but listen. sovereignty let him rule this part. Rule that part. For now. But this is the thing. It was already Jesus's. Right. And Satan was doing everything he could to what? Thwart Jesus going to the cross which is what he does which is what us. he does with us he tries to destroy our purpose <laughs> he knows exactly what we're called in and, and, and what we're gifted to do and i'm not saying like call like everybody's going to preach no everybody has a different calling everybody has different gifts yeah. but he knows exactly how to thwart that plan yeah like he knows and what god will allow those tests to happen. He will allow those temptations to happen. He'll allow those things. Why? And the Count Bible also say, also, Bible also says that he will not what allow us to be tempted beyond what we can what bear. So it's like God is giving us the strength. And go back to a point that you said earlier. God gives us the strength through who? His spirit. And Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. He ain't ate a thing. Right. He was just moving on the Holy Spirit. You, you think, like, I know for me, like, boy, you offer me a piece of bread, bro, listen. Sometimes I fast for four <laughs> hours and I'm mad. Okay. <laughs> listen. Sometimes we cut our fast short. We're like, you know what, God? I think you got enough. I made it. <laughs> Last Thursday, bro, I was like 32 minutes shy. I was like, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. It was like, but it's funny because, like, I literally, I went through that last week. Um, I did a fast for three days. Um, and I, I was just in that prayer and I was like, God. It's like, man, I'm hungry because I didn't eat. I didn't eat. I was just drinking water. And then I did a, um, a cleanse, mm -hmm. um, a juice cleanse. Because that's what I usually do when I do my um, my fast like that. And so I'm just like, man, I'm hungry. And my wife, she's cooking. She's making everything under the sun that's smelling great. Like, it, this is how bad it is. Like, I never look at a Chili's commercial. I'm like, man, that burger on Chili's look good. Not since 2001. Bro. <laughs> I'm like, I was in here in my office looking at that that screen, and I see the Chili's burger. I'm like, man, that burger looks so good. I'm going to go get the me one. The devil is alive, right? <laughs> but that's the, that's how yeah. he does. That's how he uh -huh. operates. He wants us to be what thwarted from what the plan that God has for us. Right. The whole purpose for me fasting was because 
<clears throat> two reasons. I was fasting because I wanted to get close to God, trying to get here more. But two, I had um, I was fasting for someone at the church as well too because uh, she was sharing with me that she had a cancer diagnosis and she was going to the doctor to get um, a follow up. Mm-hmm. And so I fasted. I prayed. I was like, I'm going to pray. Come on. Like, okay, God, I'm gonna gonna hear your voice and I'm gonna do that. And so I prayed with her initially when when she told me and all that stuff. And then I told her like, if you ever need anything, just you know, let me know. We'll mm-hmm. pray and whatever. Um, and it was just so funny. The, the day after my fast ended, she called me in the morning because she was going to the doctor. I missed the call because I was knocked out. But <laughs> when I woke up, I saw I missed. The, I had missed the call. I called her back. She was like, like, well, he just pulled up to the doctor's office. He was about to get out the car. And I was like, well, let me pray for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I prayed for her. And then she had called me back like an hour later. She's like, I just wanted to tell you the praise report. And she was like, the doctor told me that I don't have to come back here except another six months. And they'll check me again then. But everything looks good. And I was like, to nice. God be the glory. It's like we those moments, what, build our faith. Mm-hmm. If anyone's ever struggling, if you're struggling with faith, moments like that builds your faith. Yeah, It places it on another level to where you're like, okay, I can move in faith. Mm-hmm. I, I can be built up in faith. Yeah. I, I don't have to ascribe to those negative thoughts about me or the lies about, no, God says, this is who I am. Mm-hmm. It's like, so I'm going to lean in on that. Yeah. He said that you'll be able to what heal the sick and raise the dead, all these different things. I'm going to lean in on that. Like he said that you'll be able to prophesy. I'm going to lean in on that. Like, mm-hmm. but, and I think the scary part of that is like, we don't want to lean too much because it's like, you know, then you have to give up something else control yeah we have to give up control and and it's so funny because like the song those two songs i was listening to and it's the thing i whenever you're fasting you know whenever you're fasting i'm gonna give some really key advice like this is so key this is so strong stay in the spirit of god like keep worship music going like and i'm not talking about like a wimpy worship i'm talking about like the real deal like because that is what's going to fuel you during your fast. That is what's going to keep you. I fast in silence. But <laughs> she said I fast in silence. Facts. But it's like being in the presence of God. However you get in the presence of God. Mm-hmm. Being in the presence of God keeps you when you're hungry. Trust me. Feast, bro. Feast, bro. Right. Right. And it's like, and that's what I was doing. I was doing, I was in my word. I was re- listening to the word. I was listening to, um, to worship music. And I was like, man, it was like, and every time I did that, my hunger pains went away. Mm. I mean, they came back almost immediately, yeah. but they, <laughs> but yeah. they went away. Right, and it was like, it, and it just made me think about when Jesus was in the wilderness. It was like he was literally moving in the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. It was like this is what it's like being a Christian. It was like we have to constantly fast, constantly pray. It's not just oh, I'm a Christian, I can still do whatever I want. No, it's a constant denial of our flesh to be to in, in order to have more of His Spirit. Because if you think you got enough spirit right now, I mean, you just you dead wrong. Like, <laughs> we all need more of his spirit. Like, I don't care if you're the holiest of holiest of holiest bishops and whatever. You need more of his spirit. Facts. Like, we all okay, need Jesus. whole of it. We, right. We need more of his spirit. Like, we, like I said, Jesus fasted. He needed God's spirit. He, he needed the Father's spirit. We, if he's our example, like, why do we try so much not to be like him? But we try to be like him in other ways. Okay, I have I have a thought on this, and mm-hmm. I've already broken this down before because mm-hmm. I think that a lot of times it, as church people, as Christians, what however you want to label yourself, mm-hmm. it <laughs> we are called to be like Jesus, uh-huh. but we just want to be like God. We just, <laughs> yeah. Nobody wants. Yeah, we to want control of everything. Right. Nobody wants to serve. No one wants to lay down their own Life. everything. Right. Nobody wants to bleed Mm -hmm. for Jesus. No, we want to be celebrated Mm -hmm. for Jesus. Like, I don't want to call on my life if it's going to make people be mean to me. No, I want them to like me. Okay, well, go, Mm -hmm. go then, go. But that is not for Jesus. Mm -mm. You're going to suffer. Mm -hmm. Suffer well. Mm -hmm. Like, where as as the Bible said, where was a badge of honor? Like, I just am. Yeah. I mean, I have a whole, I have a, I have a weekly conversation with people about the compromised state of Christianity. So <laughs> we Welcome. can stay here, we can stay here all, all day, day. <laughs> because fake Jesus couldn't save me, TJ. Fake Jesus didn't deliver me. Mm-hmm. Fake Jesus couldn't sustain me. Mm-hmm. And as long as, as when it comes to struggling faith, that's why. 
Mm-hmm. You know what? You know what the faith I have now is in the one who literally did yeah. this. This is where my faith is, and it's the strongest faith my ever. My this is the strongest my faith has ever been because mm-hmm. it's not in man, it's not in ministry, it's not in routine, it's not in habit. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's solely in God. It's in something above me <clears throat> that I actually don't have the power to change. Yeah. Which is how we can have faith in it. Yeah. Because we don't, we can't affect it. Yeah. It affects us, yeah. but we can't change it. It does. And I also want to want to add this plug too, because you know, it's we, we've been talking heavy about the church. Yes. <laughs> we've been talking heavy about the church a lot, <clears throat> but I also want to make this distinction because we both shared how our experiences with God came through what still came through the church. Um, and it came through experiences that were unnatural. It came through experiences that were un, like that wasn't normal, normal situations, but it still happened in the church. And so, no, not all churches are bad. Not all churches are whack. Not all churches are terrible. We're not saying this. We're calling out the, those those terrible things that happens. And we're saying that stuff is whack. Mm-hmm. But when you solely put your heart and your faith and your trust in the, in the God of the Bible, it's like you'll begin to realize that the church is not just the building. The church is not just the weekly gatherings. The church is the entire body of believers. Period. Mm-hmm. So even going all the way, drawing all the way back to a point that I said about God's coming after a church out of spot of wrinkle, he's coming back for a body of believers. Yeah. We are the church. Living stones. Period. Like, we are the church. Mm-hmm. We are the church that he's coming back for. He's not coming back just for one church. He's not coming back just for the Kojic church. He's not coming back for the AG church. He's not coming back for the apostolic church. He's not coming back for the Baptist church. He's not coming back for all these different churches. No. He's coming back for a body of believers mm-hmm. who who really gets it and calls themselves the church. Yeah. Period. So when we talk about the church, the body, that's what we're we're referencing as the good pieces. You yeah. know what 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 God really truly, I would say, desires from us. Like He desires us to really. Lean in on that. That's why he says, "Don't forsake the assembling of ourselves," because we have to be, we have to be assembled. He wants us to be assembled. Yeah, but it's not, it's not in the way that it's like, oh, well, we got to do this and stay right. on the time crunch and do this, that, and the third. Like, see, no. He says, "Do he not wants neglect us to, the gathering of the believers." Right. Exactly. So those are the everybody believers has that to are believe. Mm-hmm. It's not. A, it's not a belief. It's it's a it's a, it's a it's belief a that posture. produces an action. Exactly. So if you don't live in according with this Mm -hmm. and I go into a room with 70 copies of you, Mm -hmm. I'm not in a room of believers, even if there's a cross on the building. I'm Mm -hmm. so sorry. Yeah, it's the truth. It's the truth. I'm sorry. It's the truth. And so like if, I don't know, I I shouldn't, we're not going there, but the believers as in the obeyers. And so Mm -hmm. to gather, I can, mm, to gather with the believers is to gather with the obeyers and it does not matter if you are a Whatever name you want to choose this week until mm-hmm. the new denomination <laughs> is made. I, it doesn't matter. Right. That's it. If you don't actually live by that, mm-hmm. you're not a believer. Right. Because when you die, you're he ain't a gonna, participator. You're a participator. And, and you're a spectator in these in these sports, in these streets. And see, I unfortunately, t- TJ, I'm from a generation. My, my generation. Am I older than you or younger? I'm 33. I'll be 33 in May. Okay, see, but we, we, we're on the same age. I'll be 34 in September. So okay, so you know, got you about a year. All right. You said what? Oh yeah, he's he's the old man. Really? Yeah, Terrence is the old man. You ain't know that. Terrence, how old are you? 40. But you look like you're 18. Right? Don't he? Me up, man. Don't he? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I was talking about because I just <laughs> black don't crack. It, so well, obviously. <laughs> amazing congratulations i will not look that young when i'm 40 i don't look that young now i thought that i didn't know that you were 30 30 plus i thought that you were still in your 20s oh that's so cute now <laughs> You're so, oh, that's so cute now mm-mm, mm-mm. No, my whole i know whole i'm 30 grown up. my back hurting now like i know i'm 30 Facts. <laughs> it's my life yeah i don't know what i'm saying but i don't right. know either Solid. I, I, guess, I guess. It's that's believers it. though. We need we need believers. We need we need people who actually live by this. Yeah. 
and that's it. A true true believers, not just you know I pick and choose different. No, true believers, like you believe everything that the Bible says. And the thing is, is like, and he, and everybody's like, oh, that's a struggle. Like, what about Deuteronomy and all those different laws? Like, read your Bible, bro. Let's <laughs> read, start there. Read, read your Bible. Let's start there. I, I literally, I had a, a challenge uh, to a friend this past week. I was like, just throw out every devotional. Mm-hmm. Stop. Right. The devotionals are not. You cannot. You can't switch this out for that. I'm so mm-hmm. sorry. Mm-hmm. If somebody else Get hands a me Bible. a Jesus calling, act act <laughs> like that is some kind of. <laughs> Mm, no. Alternative. Get you a study Bible. This is the first study Bible I bought. It's the ESV study Bible. <gasps> it's ESV. ESV is actually the oldest uh, translation beyond the King James Version. So, oldest and earliest. It's probably more reliable than King James. I don't disagree. And it's easier to read. It's easier to read. I mean, I, the lady that sold me the Bible was, was teaching me that, and I was like, I never knew that. I just thought it was King James. Have you fact checked that? Though? Yeah, I did. Okay, I did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I saw it in, in, in all that stuff, and I was like, man, it was like, why am I not taught that? <laughs> it's like why? we just taught that King James is the only way, and that's it. It was like thus, this doesn't doubt. Get you an ESV. Get you a study Bible that has the stuff broken down at the bottom, so you can understand what it means and what just what it's saying. But go ahead. <laughs> okay, so here's here's my take because I was a King James baby, right? Mm-hmm. The whole family, mm-hmm. and nobody nobody still today. They still don't know what they're reading fully they don't thou shall not know I guess. <laughs> uh but i was raised under obviously john three sixteen. Uh-huh. oh that's what i was telling you i'm from the generation participation trophy mm-hmm. it didn't work oh participation then, trophy yeah. and now we've applied that same type that's a theology now yeah participation I theology <laughs> <laughs> that's but a bar all of my that's king james uh everything but naysayers mm-hmm John three sixteen, everybody knows it, mm-hmm. right? God so loved the world. Mm-hmm. John three thirty six, not anybody knows it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but who those who believe on the Son have eternal life. But those that believeth not mm-hmm. is what King James says. But ESV says that does not obey, mm-hmm. and the original is does not obey. Mm-hmm. And see, mind you, being a King James kid, mm-hmm. living as a lesbian for all of those years, my mom would be like. <laughs> If you were to die right now, where would you go? I was like, heaven. I was like, why? I was like, because I believe. Right. I believe that and God it. is and did. Right. Because it said, believeth not. So mm-hmm. if I did not believe, I would not be saved. No, baby. But you never obeyed. Mm. And if, if we would stop thinking of belief as something that's in our head mm. and actually look at a belief that saves as something that is obedience-based, yeah. mm. we would disqualify ourselves. And it would actually make it a lot easier to uh, be shepherded. Yeah. Do because that's the first question. Do you want to obey this? Yeah. No. Okay. Well, then go on. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. You can go to church. You can pray, but if you have iniquity in your life, the Lord can't hear you. Mm, People ain't all. ready for that. Mm, they ain't ready to have that conversation. No, because Jesus is love. Like he hears my prayer. I'm I have like, a problem. But you haven't obeyed. <laughs> so why hasn't God answered my prayer? It's like because you in disobedience. Have you forgiven that person? Like. It's clearly, it's clearly after the Lord's prayer. It's like if you have not forgiven your, then what? I mean, we can, he won't forgive you. Take this to Isaiah fifty nine. You got iniquity, it ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna yeah, work. It I'm sorry. Gonna work, period. Like, I had a dream the I'm other sorry. night. Somebody that I know is very living neat, shoulder deep in iniquity. Okay, <laughs> shoulder deep, shoulder deep in iniquity. <laughs> like, and just so y'all know, Bible term iniquity is like an identity. Uh-huh. All right, this person in my dream. I have had a lot of dreams. Whew. Okay. Uh, don't even get me started. And she's like, I've been praying for you. And I was like, why? Literally in the dream. This is how, that's how rush I am. Why? why? She was like, I was like, the Lord don't hear you. Mm. The Lord don't hear you. It's like, stop. I told yeah. somebody on the pod the other week, stop praying. And mm. people scratch. And you are, it's not a, like, it's a placebo effect for yeah. a lot of people. Oh, I've been praying for you. Get your heart. Right. He don't hear you, baby. Mm. I just wish, I honestly wish, I need somebody to start reading this and preaching this and mm-hmm. let me go sit under that. <laughs> like, they don't hear you. Mm-hmm. I would, I, would I have liked it in my old life? No, but I'll, I would, you know what I was searching for, TJ, in all of those years? Mm-hmm. I was searching mm-hmm. for someone who read this, mm-hmm. believed it, and mm-hmm. lived it out. Lived it out. That's all I wanted Period. to see. I wanted to see somebody believe it enough mm-hmm. to walk it out. Mm-hmm. They didn't. So I guess he makes you into what you needed. So here we go. Pray for your girl. I told you. I told you. I've always told you. You've had an anointing and calling in your life. Yeah. That's one thing that God has given me is I have have that spirit of discernment to know, like, who his true disciples are, like, who his – 
his people are. Like, I just know. It's like I don't. I don't know. It's just like God just he shows and reveals those things to me. Like I've so I told you that even in your deepest, darkest wilderness season, I've told you that. I've always tried to keep it in your forefront, even when we was at we were having coffee, and that was very passionate and emotional. <laughs> and I told you, I just kept, kept just kept putting you in front of your face, like Terry, there's a call in your life. Terry, there's a call in your life. Say, like, yeah, but I don't want to hear that. Yeah. It's, like, it's like I'm ready to just end it all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, Terry, but there's a call in your life. But I just ready to end it. Like, as soon as I as soon as I left, I called my wife. I said, "Baby, we got to pray for Terry." Yeah. Hey, people's prayers kept me here. But yeah. see, ain't nobody want to talk about that either. But that's the church. That's the church prayers. The believers, like you just said, the believers' prayer. The yeah. prayer of the righteous, what? Availeth Avail much. much. And that, and it's, it's going to take that. Look at us quoting KJV. <laughs> right, right. We, talk, we just talked bad about KJV. That's the only thing we know. But it was like, it's going to take that to really save people. Mm-hmm. That's the overall point. Yeah. It's not it's not the fakery, the phoniness, the the hypocrisy. Look, God, Jesus, you're great. Right. It's not that. It's, it's going to be the realness. And yeah. the thing is, like, people want the real deal. They want the real experience. They want the real deal. They don't want just a 15 minute, you know, cut and dry thing. If if you have to, if you're that t- type of person, I'm, I'm just going to tell you right now, you, <laughs> you got to, you're on a path of destruction because like people want the real thing. They want, they want God. They want to experience God like mm-hmm. in a real and tangible way. And that's faith. But, but it's like, we can't pigeonhole that either. We can't be the the barriers of that either. We can't be the 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 ones who gatekeep that either. Like we have to allow the spirit of God to move. We have to allow people to experience God. We'll wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> Any last words, Terry? You want to uh, talk about your podcast real quick? No. Come on, put yourself out there. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> you don't want to market your podcast. Look, that's the Lord doing. But God, it's on her chest. It's on my chest too. I wore this. I wore this intention. It's not the same, Thanks. but God, but it is, but God, yeah. but, <laughs> but God is her podcast. She um, has an amazing platform. Um, go check it out. Um, if you need to be delivered from <laughs> <laughs> whatever struggles you got going on in your life. Let me stop. I mean, it's just real, but it's real. It's real. It's real. I it's don't real. know. I never know what I'm going to say. I just pray and fast and pray and fast and pray and fast. And, and it, it happens. And let it go. Right. And there go God. So yeah, love y'all. I'll take it easy.